Uh, Wendy, let's start with one that, um, you know, this one plays with your head a little bit, I suspect, uh, and it's in the issue around New South Wales conversion laws because uh, over mm-hmm. the weekend the New South Wales opposition leader, so the Labor leader, Chris Minns, announced on the weekend that he would ban conversion practices if elected. Uh, give us your insights mm-hmm. in here and as, as to what's happened. Uh, it's really interesting you say this plays with your head because I think that's exactly right because right from the outset I would have to say ACL and I know that you as well, we would be opposed to all um, coercive conversion practices. So if you're, if people think to themselves conversion practices, we're thinking of um, you know shock therapy or, or brainwashing treatment, that sort of thing, that is already unlawful and of course we would be opposed to that. But there is no evidence of this happening in New South Wales or indeed around Australia. But what, what our concern is, I guess, is that the real objective is to do an, a Victorian-style election uh, a, a, um, policy, which is in Victoria, um, they outlaw even consensual counselling and prayer. They even outlaw in Victoria, so it's a criminal offence for a parent to have a conversation with a child um, trying to stop them from wanting to transition to a transgender identity. So this is what our concern is. But when, when people say, oh, you know, conversion therapy, what comes to mind is something horrendous that does not happen and is already unlawful. So, you know, we need to... That's why I think it plays with people's head a bit. So all of the same issues are in play. And uh, to be fair, this is on both sides, isn't it? This is the Liberal Party in New South Wales as well as the Labor Party in New South Wales all seem to be supporting these sorts of uh, bans that would outlaw churches, uh, even doing, as you say, consensual counselling. Even people in a prayer line, as I understand it, could be, uh, you know, uh, in the firing line here. But those parental conversations around the dinner table or things that are going uh, going pear shaped in a family and parents can't even have the right to talk to their own kids. Uh, This is the sort of thing that uh, that you're talking about here that uh, we need to get our head around and be uh, understand, uh, you know, how to make sense of what's being said. Correct. So with the Labor Party, um, Chris Minns came out with a, this is what we'll do if we're elected. And very quickly, um, Perrottet jumped on board and said, oh, yes, we'll, we'll introduce these laws as well. So what we really need to do is to make sure that we're part of that conversation because we need to make sure that they understand if they try and bring in a Victorian style legislation, um, which is also what is happening in Tasmania, um, we will push back. And when I'm saying we, I'm not just meaning ACL. We need to be, as a people of God, pushing back on this because when you look at the Victorian law, I need to make this really clear. The Victorian law does not simply make electroshock or brainwashing sort of treatments unlawful. Its wording is broad enough to ban, like it it bans counselling from a pastor or a Christian counsellor or, as you say, even a parent advising someone, um, even that sex outside a man-woman marriage is simple. They wouldn't even be able to say that. It would be unlawful um, to talk to anybody uh, in terms of resisting any sort of temptation that we would see was outside God's um, parameters. But it, it also, the, the Victorian legislation explicitly says that it, it applies to carrying out a religious practice, including prayer. Um, so this is a, an incredibly concerning um, development in New South Wales. What we're talking about is people who are asking for prayer and not being able to get it because of the criminal um, the criminal uh, penalty attached there. And when people want help, oftentimes they'll turn to their local church or they'll be referred to someone within a church who has their head around these sorts of issues uh, but criminalising the church around these issues is very challenging. And as, as you say, uh, there's already some significant things in play in Victoria and it is already uh, on the agenda for both sides, no matter what the outcome of the New South Wales state election. So it doesn't leave a whole lot of hope there for 
uh, there being some level of freedom of religion, freedom of thought, freedom of speech in New South Wales to be able to continue, Wendy. And let me just uh, just to throw this in here. For your impression, Wendy Francis, it seems to be that Christians who are aware that something needs to be done, someone needs to speak up, our response is usually pretty poor, isn't it? Well, I think people are concerned about their own um, well-being and their own safety, but this is really important because what we're talking about is children who are um, confused about their gender, and this is a very real um, occurrence. This is something that is growing because of the sort of stuff we've got in our in our curriculum, and I think you know even what's happening in Tasmania with drag queens and stuff. This is the confusion over gender is is something that is on the increase. And we are we are actually sacrificing our children if we are not prepared to speak up about this because children need um, they need that sort of watchful waiting approach that that is global best practice that is uh, certainly medical practitioners right across the board would say global best practice is a watchful waiting not immediately putting your children onto um, some sort of hormone blockers when they're only 11 years old followed by uh, often um, other hormones that would would, uh, help them to transition and even um, surgical assistance to help them transition, which we know will never, ever end um, in a good result because you cannot biologically change from one gender to another. It's actually impossible. And Wendy, just to deepen this some more too, because some people might be thinking, oh, this is just another conspiracy theory. Uh, You know, people being outspoken, saying that our freedoms are under threat and uh, really is there a true threat that's there because, hey, aren't these laws in in force in Victoria and, you know, people aren't being imprisoned? Uh, But the thought here that, uh, you know, you could say, is this some sort of conspiracy theory? As you pointed out, there are no evidence for uh, for any of those conversion practices, you know, the shock treatment and such things happening anywhere. So you only have to boil it down and you recognise that this is aimed at Christians. It's aimed at the church. That is a concern, isn't it? It's a huge concern because if, if a church or even any practitioner was um, was doing was using the sort of electroshock or brainwashing treatments, then I actually have to say that churches were never the one the main culprit for this. We we go back and look at counselling um, sessions that did use this. Of course, of course that's not right, and um, and that is not happening. If it was happening, then we could go to the police about that. It is unlawful. Those treatments are unlawful already. So we've got to say, okay, what is the main um, what is the main uh, target here? And you have to look at faith-based groups because the legislation explicitly says that it applies to carrying out a religious practice, including but not limited to a prayer-based practice. So prayer is actually in the firing gun here. And if we can't pray for somebody, then we have no religious freedom at all in our nation. And it is hurting the people it's designed to protect uh, because if you can't seek help, if you can't go to your doctor and expect your doctor will tell you the truth, uh, you're the one who's being hurt. Uh, it doesn't necessarily affect or hurt Christians uh, if we are you know, saying, no, we can't talk to you about that. The people who are seeking the help are the ones who are being hurt, aren't they? It's the children. It always comes back to the children for me, Neil, and I know that adults are also being hurt. But young children are never, you know, you can't say that a child can't be easily um, easily affected by the sort of curriculum that, we're, that they're seeing. We can't say that a child's not going to be confused during puberty. What child is not confused during puberty? So what they need is somebody to walk alongside them, to be truthful with them, to love them, to, to, to see them through to the other side, not to immediately say, well, the only thing we can do here, the only legal, the only legal avenue for a child who's confused in Victoria is to affirm them in their confusion. That is the only legal pathway. And this is what New South Wales are looking to, to emulate and we are just going to push back as much as we possibly can because this is just too important. Uh, Wendy, there's a state election coming up in New South Wales and you've got both sides, the Labor Party and the Liberal Party, uh, both saying they'll want to ban conversion practices and, as you say, those things are already outlawed 
the way you, way you think of those uh, those dreadful uh, physical effect practices, but the target is the Christian church. What's the answer, Wendy Francis? Uh, how should we be thinking uh, candidates that we vote for? What sort of action can you take? Should you be in touch with your MPs and candidates at this time? Uh, this is an important time, isn't it, in the lead up to an election? It really is. Election is the one time that you can be very sure that um, the candidates are listening, the government is listening. And so we need people to contact them, their local MPs. We need people to contact both leaders and say that they do not want parental rights being removed from them to be able to talk to their children who are confused about their gender. We do not want... Um, consensual counselling and prayer and parental conversations to be made criminal. This is an incursion into um, parental rights. It is a complete um, switch around between church and state. Like we're saying, you know, we want church and state to be separate. And this is the state telling not just the church, but parents how they are to be able to talk to their children. So, yes, Neil, we really encourage people contact your all of your candidates, ask them how they would vote if this sort of legislation was put in, contact your um, the two leaders of the parties, contact existing MPs um, and stay stay in, in uh, touch with ACL because we're, we're doing a number of different um, campaigns in this sort of area. So stay in touch with us as well. In the lead up to the election, we're wanting to uh, make sure that we do some interviews with people who are really trying to push back on this as well. So I encourage people to stay in touch. Okay, let's move on. There's a bunch of other things happening and uh, something, I guess, good to uh, talk about. Uh, the Walk for Life in Adelaide on Saturday, first of what will be a whole bunch of pro-life walks or marches uh, in various capital cities through the year ahead. Uh, how did things go on Saturday? Look, it was really good. Um, there was over 2,000 who gathered in Adelaide. Um, they just around Parliament House. They actually, Pennington Gardens, they walked around Parliament House. And so there were a number of MPs there as well. I know that um, Senator Alex Antic was there. Um, the Honourable Sarah Game was there. Uh, Martin Niles spoke as well. But uh, when you look at the crowd, and I, I wasn't there, but I looked at the pictures and there's just no doubt that we are witnessing... Um, the emergence of an absolute new pro-life generation because these younger generations, they know the humanity of the unborn because on Facebook, they see the first photo of a baby is in the mum's womb. They see it. I see these these pictures. So there's no... um, It's impossible for this generation to, to sort of buy the lie that an unborn baby is is nothing. It's just a, a clump of cells. So they know this. So what what we're seeing is a really um, big encouragement because a young generation is actually rising up and they are the ones now campaigning on behalf of of the unborn. And so that's a wonderful thing. There are a couple of really good um, initiatives at the moment in uh, both federal parliament but also then in South Australian parliament. Um, The Born Alive Bill uh, has been sponsored by Alex Antic and Matt Canavan. But there's also a, a bill in South Australia by Sarah Gain, um, who she wants to see criminals who commit offences against pregnant women and the baby actually dies. She wants to see the baby recognised as well as the violence against the woman. Um, so that's a good bill too. But this Born Alive bill is something that every single one of our listeners can have a say in. There's a, a petition on our website, the ACL website. But, you know, if you just... Uh, even Google Born Alive Bill and and Matt Canavan, you'll you'll find different ways that you can support that bill. Uh, Tell me, Wendy, if you know, because uh, these days, and it's usually an estimate, but the number of babies' lives that are terminated annually in Australia, is there a number that the ACL works with? Because, uh, you know, we sometimes hear different numbers and uh, whatever number you use, it's usually a horrendously high number. But what's the number that you tend to work with when someone says how many babies are aborted in Australia each year? So we always work with a conservative number because we want to be careful not to conflate these numbers. So if you go to any of the... um, the pro-choice websites and you look for uh, the statistics, 
consistently you will see that it's around 100,000. So I think that's a conservative figure. I think it's probably more than that, particularly now that we have an abortion um, pill that people can take, um, which is hard to monitor and hard to get statistics from. But we're talking 100,000 babies, 100,000 little Australians being terminated annually in Australia. Um, And certainly... If anybody thinks of 100,000 lives being lost every year, you'd have to say it makes it one of the most important human rights issues of our day. There's lots more to talk about and we'll monitor things along through the year, Uh, especially on a Monday when we're talking to the Australian Christian Lobby, very interested in how the abortion debate uh, continues in Australia and the growth of a pro-life movement. As you say, we ought to be very excited about that, Wendy Francis, that there is a new emerging generation of young people who are taking up the challenge to fight for unborn children. Just quickly, uh, time's almost running out. Uh, the Australian Law Reform Commission inquiry into Christian schools, is there something we ought to know uh, that's, that's, that's continuing to, uh, to hit the headlines or not hit the headlines as they should? Yeah, so the um, Australian Law Reform Commission, so most people talk ALRC, so that's what I'll say to the point point of the time. So the ALRC um, recommendation to the government now that has come out in a discussion paper would actually, if if it was followed to the letter, it would really see the end of of Christian schools, religious schools in our nation. So what what the ALRC is recommending is that um, schools, Christian schools would not be able to employ uh, somebody, or uh, they would not either be able to really um, make the ethos of the school completely Christian. So they would have to, alongside teaching uh, Christian beliefs on sexuality and gender, they have to teach ideas that are completely opposite to Christian views on sexuality and gender. And so, yeah, we're we're trying to help people. Um, contribute to the, this um, this discussion paper. There's a there's a survey that is is on the website and um, the the government website, the ALRC website. So we're we're trying to help coach people on how best to answer that survey. Um, but also there's a there's calls for submissions and people can write a submission as well. But, you know, this is an issue that really hits home to a lot of Australians and not just religious Australians. There are many Australians who want their children to go to a Christian school because because of the ethos that is there. And this would be completely um, the right for parents to send their children to a Christian school would be removed if the ALRC had their way. As you say, it could spell the end of Christian schooling in Australia as we know it. And uh, Wendy, mm-hmm. webinars are a great way to get a little more depth. We, I feel like sometimes we're just touching and scratching the surface uh, when we get an update uh, each week on these things and the ALRC recommendations. Uh, uh, let's talk about a, a webinar or two you've got coming up. Uh, if people are participating mm-hmm. in those, what sort of things would they expect to hear? Uh, how long do they go, the webinars? And uh, what yep. sort of person is likely to respond? That's great. Thank you, Neil, for that. When, this Wednesday and Thursday night in the evening, depending on where you are in Australia, but we're 7 or 7.30, um, where it'll be an hour and a half max. I'm always pretty good on timing. So an hour and a half. And what we're going to do is actually walk through the survey and explain what the questions actually mean and allow people during that time to fill out the survey while they're online. And we will give like three or four minutes for each question for people to go away and actually fill it out and then come back and still listen. So it'll be on the whole time. So it won't be an intrusive thing into their evening, but it will be an assistance to people to to be able to actually do this survey. It's such an important thing for the good news stories to get out there because we know that there are many um, people who are pushing very hard for uh, the end to Christian schooling. And whether or not you yourself have been involved in Christian schools, we have to say that this is a really important um, way of salt and light 
in our nation uh, for the children who are attending Christian schools, many of whom are not necessarily believers themselves, but who are seeking that sort of ethos to be able to soak up in their early days of, of life. So it's an important thing for every Australian, certainly for Christian Australians, and we, we would love people to, to you just go to the ACL website and you can um, you can get the link to actually attend that Wednesday and Thursday nights. Well, I know there's a lot of people. We get to the end of a segment where we talk about these things that are really challenging uh, on the agenda politically, uh, what affects Christians, what affects the freedom of Christian schools, the freedom of churches to be able to teach what the Bible teaches, these things under threat. And so for listeners who want to participate in that sort of webinar and uh, find out how you can actually take some action, uh, lots of action you can take, as we mentioned when we were talking about those conversion laws, but around this one, very, very important. The ACL website is acl.org.au, Australian Christian Lobby, and you'll find a link there for that Australian Law Reform Commission inquiry and uh, how you can join in those webinars, how you can participate in that survey. So the website, easiest one to remember ever, acl.org.au. Wendy Francis, National Director of Politics at the Australian Christian Lobby. Wendy, thanks so much for a great update once again today on 2020. Thank you, Neil, very much. Thank you to you and your listeners. 